All right, how's it going guys? So today we're gonna to be taking a look at the HG Build Divers Impulse Gundam Arc. So this is one of two kits between the Impulse Gundam Arc and the Impulse Gundam Lancier that are kind of like uh, twin kits that kind of go together. They're also in together in the series. I still haven't watched Build Divers, so I haven't actually seen them together in action, but they're essentially like the same kits. They're both based off of the HG Impulse Gundam, the HG Force Impulse Gundam Revive kit. So it's a really good kit to be based off of. That's a nice kit, I think. Nicely detailed, nicely articulated. It was definitely a good revive kit. And now they've got some new equipment, some new parts, some new colors, and they're looking pretty cool. I really like the look of the two kits. This one more so I this is definitely the one I prefer out of the two both of them are really cool so this is the first one in numerical order so we'll take a look at this one first then we'll take a look at the impulse Gundam Lancier in the next review so stay tuned for that coming up next as always guys a huge thank you to us at Gundam store for sponsoring the review check the link to their site down below in the description and use that coupon code there's Aquarius 10 and save 10% off whatever you want to buy there so this is a pretty standard build fighters or build divers HG kit where it's based off of an older kits and they're adding new parts to it so you've got a handful of leftover parts in there and everything too and it works out pretty well in this case because it's based off of a very recent kit rather than being based off of something particularly old but let's go ahead and run through all the accessories that you get included with this all right so first up is the stickers there's really not too many of them and they're mostly just for cameras so that's pretty good there is one large color app one here for this purple part here on the side of the skirt otherwise it's just for like cameras like here in the center of the chest then there for the eyes for the camera there on the top of the head and for the camera here on the back of the head and then one on the weapon as well you can see you have a lot of extra leftover sticker that you can use there to cut out for extra cameras if you need if you like need some sticker for that then there's no sticker provided so like here for example on the side of the head on his sort of very unique v-fin here very wide out to the side and you have those two parts that drop down there uh, according to the artwork those are actually cameras as well so you can see i've just cut out little tiny slivers of sticker from here to stick on those little bits so that you have actually that filled in as uh, cameras as well. Now really his only kind of major accessory or weapon is just the arc rifle here, which is pretty awesome. It's a very big, very cool looking weapon. Definitely looks like something out of age and it has like this really cool tank there at the, at the bottom of it. There's where the other sticker goes on there for the camera for that. Kind of ugly hollow spaces on the underside of there, but that's not too bad. The handle will move up and down for the transformation, just like with the Impulse Gundam originally, this does uh, transform into two separate flyers, the chest core flyer and the leg flyer. So we'll take a look at that in a moment as well. And then the fuel tank also moves up and down like that. And just to give you an idea of the size of this, as you can see, it's almost as tall as the Gundam itself. So it's a very, very big gun. I'm worried about the weight issues of this, but the joints on the kit are pretty solid. So I think it should be okay. This really isn't all that heavy. Then we have a couple of connection pieces. These are for connecting the kit when it's in its two separate flyers onto action bases. And you have a whole bunch of leftover parts from the original Impulse kit. So if you're wondering if you can build the just regular Force Impulse Gundam in this color scheme with this kit, you can't. You are missing a couple pieces for that. Uh, but you have some stuff here, most notably like the two flyer parts, which are also included from that. You also have the full beam rifle from the Impulse Gundam included with this. So that's pretty cool. And some other bits that you could use if you prefer, like the original shoulder armor, you have all of that here. Or the original size guard armor, if you prefer, you have just the one single piece for that. So there's some different options in there if you want to make yours a little bit customized using some of the extra parts. And that is pretty much it. So let's just take a look at the articulation. The head will go up really nice and far all the way to there. Pretty cool with a double joint there in the neck, the ball joint, and then it's on a swinging joint there at the base as well. Down to there. You will have a seam line on the head, fortunately not down the side like many HG kits tend to have, but unfortunately down the middle. So you'll have that going all the way across the top of that back part and then down the back of the head there. Seam lines on the shoulders are fortunately covered up by this part that goes over the top. And the only other real notable seam line will be here on the forearms going down the front and the back of the forearm there. But back to the articulation, the shoulder will move forward and back just a little bit, it's just on a ball joint there, so not a whole lot. But upwards it will move a lot better as you can get the arm all the way up like that, which I believe is for the transformation, so that would be why, but that does work really nicely. And then the arm just rotates there at the top, nice double joint here at the elbow to give you a really full bend, and the wrist is just on a ball joint, and these are the only hands you have included with the kit, if you're wondering. No other hand options here aside from just the holding hands, unfortunately. The front skirts are together, but can be separated for movement up like that. The side skirts are these big giant cannons, which can be rotated forward for when they're firing, like that 
but otherwise they're just going to be kind of in the way. I feel like they're not going to move out to the side very much a little bit, but you're really only going to be able to get the legs out to about there, which is really not that bad. I mean, you really wouldn't have too many times where you'd want to have the legs too far spread out any more than that. It'd be for a pretty extreme pose. Back around here to the backpack, you have this new part here, which will move up and down a little bit like that. The thruster belt, unfortunately for that, not molded in gray. It's just in purple, so you might want to at least paint that. This new bit here also just plugs right onto the back skirt, and these fuel tanks will move up and down. The back skirt itself, of course, does not move at all. That's just fixed there. The hip joint will rock side to side. The legs rotate there at the top. You can bring the leg up all the way forward to about 90 degrees only, and then the nice double joint in the knee is going to give you more than 90 degrees, but really the double joint is a little bit inhibited by just the shape of the armor here. So it's not going to be a full bend, but it's definitely more than enough, I think. Down here at the ankles, this bit of armor at the front will move up and down on its own. You do have a seam line there as well, which you might want to get rid of that. And the ankle will rock side to side, so you can get your maximum width stance at maybe about something like that. All the way forward and all the way back is pretty nice. And then you do also have a separate toe again for the transformation, but that definitely helps in posing as well to be able to point the toe down like that. Up underneath the feet, you do have a couple of little points of hollow space there, but some nice detail as well. So it's a little bit mixed. All right, and getting it posed up on an action base and actually utilizing those uh, side skirt cannons there, you know, I just kind of wrote those off as just kind of a throwaway gimmick, really not all that interesting and just kind of probably going to end up being more in the way than anything. But actually... Having them in use like this, I think they actually look pretty cool. You know, I, the thing that I was most excited about for this kit was like, in terms of the accessories and the weapons, was just the gun, just because it's so big and cool looking. Uh, and it's just kind of like its only weapon, really, for the most part. But uh, you really kind of take for granted the beam rifle and the shield uh, kind of accessories that we most often get with Gundam kits, and to the fact that this kit doesn't have those. It does feel a little bit lacking in terms of the accessories having only just that big giant gun. While it's really cool, if you wanted to do anything other else other than that with this, you really don't have a whole lot of options. So actually those side skirt cannons do end up being pretty cool. They give you a little bit more options that, uh, I don't know, otherwise this kit is definitely lacking in that area. And just to give you guys a look at the transformed state when it's separated into its chest core flyer and leg flyer, Here's how it looks. It's pretty stupid. It's one of those transformations that just looks like a Gundam just folded up, but in this case it's folded up and separated in half, and that's it. I can't imagine this is really going to be something that a lot of people are going to be excited about with when they're buying this kit, but if it is, hey, here's what it's going to look like if you wanted to actually display it like that. All right, guys, and so to wrap up, of course, the final test had to be the weight test on the arm, and remarkably, it's able to hold up that giant... Uh, rifle with the arm fully extended like that and it's not sagging down at all. The shoulder and the elbow joints seem plenty strong enough. The wrist joint is where it was kind of weak uh, but one little point of advice I'll give you guys is make sure you push that wrist joint into the forearm as far as possible to make sure that that is not going to sag at all. Now, I, to be realistic, I think if you have this up on your shelf like this for an extended period of time, uh, over time, that's probably going to start to sag down just due to the weight of that. It'll eventually give in, I'd have to imagine. So if you want to have this posed like this for a long time or forever, you might as well just glue some of those joints or do something to stiffen them even further. But as it is, it's actually able to hold up the rifle and that's pretty cool. So definitely a really cool kit. One thing too that I haven't talked about at all, but I really should, is the color scheme. I really like the color scheme of this kit and on camera at the moment I'm noticing it's looking a little bit more blue. In person it looks a little bit more purple. Hopefully I'll be able to fix that up and post for you guys to get that color as true as possible. Because it's definitely got, uh, the dark blue is definitely a dark blue, but the lighter shade is a really nice purplish blue color and it's really cool. And the feet and the midsection where there's that little bit of like kind of gross yellow. On the runners it didn't look very good. On the kit it definitely looks a lot better. It's really cool like uh, pale orangish kind of looking color. Not so much yellow but it looks more like a pale orange color. It looks really good and then the bits of white for the fuel tanks and the tank on the gun and the uh, lighter color for the just the color of the gun as well instead of just like a normal darker gray or something. I think the light color of that also really looks really cool. So I got to give the color scheme for this kit definitely an A+. Plus. Accessories you know, if you if you love the accessories for this kit, then you're going to like it. If you're wanting a little bit more, then you might be a little bit disappointed just because of the fact that this is basically like a gun and then the side skirt cannons, which are just kind of an extra little thing. But like I said before, I'm actually quite surprised at how much I kind of like those as a gimmick of this kit. So that's pretty cool. 
And again, as I said in the beginning of the video, in the next review, we're gonna be taking a look at the Impulse Gundam Lancier. And in that video, we will just pass talking about any of their articulation and we'll talk about how to mix and match these kits because you can mix and match parts to make different combinations of them, which is pretty cool. So we don't need to go over the articulation again in that review. So instead, we'll, we'll spend more time talking about that. So if you are interested in seeing how the kits uh, mix and match together, make sure you check out that review coming up next. And as always, guys, if you do have any other further questions or comments about this particular kit feel free to leave those in the comment section there down below as well and again check out USA Gundam store the link to their site is in the video description so thank you guys so much for watching I'll see you in the next review bye bye hey thanks for watching guys remember if you want to check the kit out for yourself you can head over to USA Gundam store use that coupon code Zakurilius10 save yourself 10% thanks for watching guys see you next time bye bye